Cisco Chat Live. We have Team DevNet getting ready for the fifth year of the DevNet Zone. It's actually our sixth uh, time at Cisco Live, but figure out the math. Five years, six DevNet Zones in the United States, and we're going to talk about the DevNet Zones all around the world. But first, let's do some introductions. I'm Sylvia Spiva, Cisco Developer Community Manager, and I am joined by a great team. Let's go to Eric. Hi, thanks, Sylvia. Uh, I am Eric Thiel. I am the Senior Engineering Manager of Developer Advocacy on the DevNet team. Hey there, uh, I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a Developer Advocate with the DevNet team. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Thomas Taylor. I'm one of the UX UI designers on uh, the DevNet team. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm the tech lead in the DevNet team. Hi, I'm Denise Kwan. I'm a developer advocate and support engineer on the DevNet team. And uh, for those of you who may not know, Denise and I sit together in the office and get to do this all the time. So this is going to be our coziest, friendliest. We're going to forget that there's a whole world out there watching Cisco Chat Live. And this is about the DevNet Zone. So um, first of all, we want to make sure that everyone who's watching on YouTube, Twitter, uh, Facebook, uh, Cisco.com knows that we have our awesome uh, marketing team responding to questions. Greg and Julio and Cisco TV are monitoring all the questions that are coming in. So uh, make sure that you ask questions. And the first question I have for the audience is, how many DevNet zones have you been to? If you've been to the DevNet zone, tell us where and when and how many times. And while you're answering that, we're going to hear from Denise. Um, so who, who's the person that's been to all of them? Has anyone been to all of them? I think there's a couple people on our team, but the one that stands out is Mike. He has been to every single DevNet zone, um, all four of them. So we're not just talking about the US one, as well as Impact. That's right, Impact, GSX. So many people may have gone to GSX. Now, uh, of course, Mike is one of the original members of the team and um, he wrote a blog post. Um, and you know he also sits in the office with us. So what, what have you heard uh, Mike say? I know he's been busy getting ready for Cisco Live, but what has he been sharing with you? Pretty much like you know the, the whole journey that we've been through from starting from San Francisco all the way to now, and the different the different things that we have changed throughout the years. I mean, something as simple as the types of interactive demos that we have. Um, we had the train for at one point. We had the Lego set at another, and then we'll see what what they come up with this time. And um, you know, it's not like we go somewhere and buy a Lego city and bring it to the DevNet zone. Tell us a little bit about how. The, the famous Lego cities get built. So um, I pretty much built the Lego city that we saw and it was just a whole lot of work of just putting together the pieces. But you know, I'm a Lego person, so it was definitely a lot of fun putting that together. But we wanted something that people can see and visualize while they're doing these coding, um, these coding classes and learning labs. You know, I feel like we could go on and on forever talking about all these stories behind the DevNet zone. Um, for example, you mentioned the trains and, you know, the IoT uh, demos. That's where Debbie was born, right? Debbie was originally a chatbot for a demo for Cisco Live. Yes. Uh, so who, who's Debbie's daddy? Kareem is actually Debbie's daddy. Um, he... He was, uh, we don't, we don't really know who's the mom, but we just know who the dad is. And, but you know, things happen, things are born out of all this work that goes into building the DevNet zone for all of you. And in case you don't know, Debbie does have his own Twitter handle at DebbieBot. He's got a personality, so be careful what you ask uh, because, you know, he does reply. Um, so, you know, other things that have been born out of the DevNet zone, um, you know, are it, the community, right? That's for sure. Learn, code, inspire, connect. That's where we come together. And um, I, I want to hear the stories from people out there, but do you have a favorite story from a DevNet zone that you've worked in here in Europe? Um, I mean, they're all really fun and there's always good things that come out of them. I think the best things is just having customers come to me 
and tell me how how much I've helped them, you know, especially being a support engineer, how much whatever I did for them and however I helped them, help them in the long run for their projects, for, um, you know, their company and how much they've benefited from DevNet being able to help people with the issues that they have. That's awesome. And, and people can find you at the info desk again in San Diego. Yep. I will be at the info desk as well as giving some sessions. Tell us about the info desk first, the frequently asked questions. Maybe we can help answer some frequently asked questions. So people will think of other questions to ask you. Okay. So I've been to, what is that? I think this is going to be my fourth US Cisco Live. And I've always worked at the info desk. And I think our most frequently asked question is, how do I get that swag? Because <laughs> DevNet has the coolest swag in Cisco Live. So of course everybody comes over, sees it, and it's like loves it. So it's actually really easy. All you do is have to be a DevNet member. And to go to be a DevNet member, just go to developer.cisco.com and join to be a DevNet member. When you get to Cisco Live, you can show us that you're a DevNet member and you can get our cool swag. We know it's all about the swag. We oh, know for sure. We're all about our members, and we have to give a shout out to Erin and Kelly, yep. who you know are. I always say Erin is the queen of the DevNet zone, mm -hmm. and so if if you have a great experience, make sure that you thank the people behind it. You know, we have Captain Cloud here, and um, like I said, there are so many stories about the DevNet zone, but I don't think I'm allowed to talk about what happened in Vegas with Captain Cloud. Um, <laughs> but you know, we, we if you use the hashtag DevNet and the hashtag CLUS, and maybe do look for Captain Cloud, you can figure it out yourself. You know, it, it is out there. Now, um, tell us about the sessions that you're teaching, and, you know, especially for people that um, want to get started. So he, in, in San Diego, the ones that I'm teaching are our Start Now sessions. It's going to be in the Start Now area of the DevNet zone. And it is the coding 1001, 1002, and the intro to Git. Um, we know that a lot of people are now starting off with the whole network programmability. They want to start learning how to code, but they don't know where to start. So as you hear by the name, start now. Come over to the start now area of the DevNet zone, and we will teach you the basics of coding and help you get started with that. Awesome. And it's going to be very busy. So if you want to make sure that you get some quality time with our DevNet developers, uh, please sign up to meet the developer. So if you go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live, you'll see right there a picture of Denise. And if you click on it, you'll get the details on how to schedule time so that you can get your questions answered one-on-one -on -one, uh, with our developer team. Um, amazing developer team. We are getting questions from um, from our social media channels. Uh, I have to I, I have to mention this question that just came in because I think it's a loaded question. Stuart Clark is asking who has the most awesome beard on the DevNet team? We'll just leave that one for later. <laughs> so <laughs> keep sending us your questions. Stuart, yes, you can keep sending questions too. But now since we're talking about meeting the developer, getting started and wow, the, the fifth anniversary of the DevNet Zone, this global mm -hmm. phenomenon. Let's go to Eric because um, he's, he's management, as you can tell by the sports coat he's wearing. Eric? <laughs> hey, Sylvia, thanks. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm personally very stoked for the Cisco Live. Uh, this is going to be my US Cisco Live, uh, my first one as a member of the, the actual DevNet team. Uh, but there's a ton of stuff that we have in store that I think is going to be really exciting. This will be my fifth DevNet zone in the U.S. Again, four of those as attendees, and every Cisco Live since it started, I've been uh, I've spent all of my time in the DevNet zone. Frankly, I, I think it has some very interesting, very dynamic content. It's a great opportunity for people to see a lot of up and coming technologies, a lot of new ways of managing networks, of approaching challenges. Uh, but first and foremost, what I'd say is Cisco Live isn't just for in-person folks anymore. So a lot of you won't have the opportunity to make it out, and that's fine. We actually, there's a ton of ways that you can still get a lot out of Cisco Live, even if you can't make it in person. So the first is the keynote on day one, always a huge amount of attendance, great information that you can take away from that. It's going to be streaming live from CiscoLive.com June 10th, Monday, from 1030 to 12 Pacific. 
Uh, and we're going to have Chuck, David, and Amy on stage talking about a lot of cool, new, innovative stuff, uh, getting everyone amped up about all of the different things that we're going to be focusing on Cisco Live this year. So if you can't make it in person, definitely check out the live stream. If you can make it in person, definitely get there early because those seats fill up quickly, and you do want to be there to catch a lot of the exciting stuff that's going to be happening. Um, beyond that, then, uh, we have our own Susie Weed, the leader of DevNet, uh, that's doing an innovation talk Monday afternoon. So if you are in person, you can check that out at, uh, from 2.30 to 3.15 in the DevNet zone. She's going to talk specifically about a lot of the DevNet direction, where we see things going, uh, what are the cool new things that we have going on, and uh, give you a lot of tools to help enjoy the entire week. Uh, she'll be able to give you a roadmap of things to look at and, and, and to check out while you're in the DevNet zone. Uh, that one will also be available for streaming after the fact, I believe, on Thursday or Wednesday. So if you can't make it, check that out after the fact. Um, but all of the other classroom sessions that we have uh, will also be available on Cisco Live 365 after the fact. So if you can't make it in person, go afterwards. Or if you have conflicting sessions, go afterwards. You can, you can check those out live. Uh, the other things that we have going on, so obviously if you've been following us at all on social media, there's been a lot of buzz around Wi-Fi 6, and we're going to be having a lot of sessions and a lot of content around the Wi-Fi 6 uh, dev center that we launched at developer.cisco.com slash wireless. Uh, so we'll, we'll build a lot of content around that. What can you do with Wi-Fi 6? What are the opportunities to developers and to network infrastructure uh, uh, automators uh, to leverage Wi-Fi 6 in the new capabilities? Uh, as always, there's going to be a lot around IoT. Um, that's huge in the industry right now, and lots of people want to find out what they can do with IoT. How can they leverage it in their environment? How can they secure it? Uh, there's going to be a lot of cool and interesting things going on. So check out some of our, our demos and some of our workshops around IoT. And then last, almost all of the workshops, if you come to them uh, or if you can't make it to a workshop, most of them actually end up publishing their code as well to the Code Exchange, which is a great repository of code samples that you can go to on developer.cisco.com slash exchange. Uh, and that's a great way where if you see something cool or you hear about something cool, go out there, search for it. You can pull it down and you can try it in your own environment. Uh, and it's all open source code, uh, no licensing required, all great stuff that you can try out. You just answered um, one of the questions that we're seeing come in from YouTube. Alpesh was asking, where can I find use cases available so code exchange, developer.cisco.com, code exchange. Um, Absolutely, there. code exchange has hundreds of, uh, of curated repositories where people have submitted anything cool that they built. And we encourage you, don't just go out there and see it and say that's cool. If you see something that's interesting, go out and expand on it. All of these people that are submitting want people to kind of contribute ideas, cool, innovative enhancements. So once you get a feel for it and you decide that there's new capability that you could add on, Go out and uh, find it in GitHub, do a pull request, and, and help the whole community out by adding to it. There is so much information that you gave us, Eric. I feel like people really need to do their homework before they get to the DevNet zone. So thank you for, for all those useful links. And, um, and, and that's, like you were mentioning, it's true that a lot of people will not be able to join us live uh, in person. So there is a lot that they can do on site. Um, I'm sure that there are things that haven't been announced yet. Is there anything you can tell us or anything that you can tell us about specifically what's going to be new in the in the DevNet zone? Well, it's just you and me here, right? I should, I'm sure I can share some me. stuff. It's just us, yeah. Uh, no, there won't be any spoilers, just like uh, those of you that have muted Game of Thrones on Twitter. We're not, we're not going to do any spoilers of anything too exciting here. Uh, but uh, what I will tell you is we are going to have a focus this year around network automation. So in prior to joining the DevNet team, I, uh, I was working in the systems engineering organization, and I did workshops nonstop with customers talking about what are their challenges they're encountering, what are the real-world issues that they see, and figuring out ways that automation can help them. So this year, we're really having a key focus on network automation and how can we actually tie it to tangible use cases for customers. So we want to make sure that what we're doing is relevant to you all. And so you'll see that in a lot of the workshops, a lot of the demos that we have, uh, where we're taking you through a journey of here's a problem, here's some technologies that can help you solve it, here's some sample code that can help you solve it. We're really trying to put all of those pieces together so that anyone that's joining us, or even here's a partner that can come help you solve it, if it's something that's a little bit too daunting for you. So you'll see a lot of focus around that, and specifically around network automation inside the DevNet Zone this year. 
So I'm going to come back to you, Eric, um, with, with some more questions. We're getting a lot of questions from the audience. Uh, but you mentioned uh, that you joined the DevNet team officially this year. But before you joined the DevNet team, you had the record, if I remember correctly, for hosting or participating in the most DevNet Express events. Is that right? Do you still have that record? Uh, it's hard to say. I, I at least had the unofficial record of, I believe, 21 DevNet Expresses that I either uh, emceed or participated in. Uh, but there's lots of people now that are that are nipping at my heels. There's lots of awesome events going on. If you haven't encountered it before, you can actually go out to developer.cisco.com slash events and see a list of upcoming events. But DevNet Expresses in particular, if you aren't familiar, is a two-day event uh, that we do where you can come out and learn everywhere from beginning coding all the way through working with specific technologies. So I want to now go to Matt, who's going to tell us about a brand new, brand new, never before done DevNet Express that you can get access to before Cisco Live. Matt? Uh, thanks, Sylvia, and thanks, Eric, for that segue that actually uh, works out quite nicely. Um, so I am proud to announce that we are going to be doing the first ever DevNet Express Meraki event um, the Saturday and Sunday before Cisco Live US. This will be June 8th and 9th. Um, we are holding the event at the... Um, at the Union co-working space in the gas lamp quarter. So it should be an actually fun, engaging environment uh, for everybody. And uh, what we'll be doing is an introduction to coding and REST APIs. So uh, when you come out of there, you'll have a, a little bit of a hands-on experience with Python and actually using, um, using REST APIs. And then we'll do a pretty deep dive into the Meraki technology and all of the integration points that you will be touching uh, when using the Meraki platform. So um, when you come away from that two-day immersive experience, um, you'll be pretty well versed in, in uh, Meraki, uh, Meraki development. Um, so I do have some other little tidbits of information around the DevNet Express um, program. And so we've, we've been running this program now for two and a half years, um, started in October 2016. Uh, but uh, we just recently celebrated our 300th DevNet Express, um, and we've covered 50 different countries. And actually, this week alone, uh, 10 events are running simultaneously as well. Um, so it is a very popular event. Um, we, we package it all up for our uh, systems engineers, uh, for our partners to give to their customers, and we make all of that content that you see in the DevNet Zone, I shouldn't say all of it, but a lot of the content that you see in the DevNet Zone accessible to um, everyone around the world and, and really put that the, the DevNet uh, spin on everything. So it's really exciting um, to be offering a Meraki a version of this DevNet Express, and I'm, I'm particularly proud of it um, because I, I had a, a big hand in building it out. So really excited. I really would love everyone to come that can. Um, spots are limited, so sign up as fast as possible. Um, and you can hit that at uh, cs.co slash Meraki, C-L-U-S-19, that's M-E-R-A-K-I, C-L-U-S-1-9, um, and register today. Uh, like I said, spots are filling up quickly, so please, uh, we would love to have you. And as a reminder to everyone, you can participate in the DevNet Express even if you're not attending Cisco Live. They just happen Correct. to both be in San Diego, and it's two days of free training. It's it's free. You get to learn from, you know, the the best, the people that that you know build, you know, the the products, the the design, the user, the developer experience. So. This is a really great opportunity to get an entire weekend of free training from the experts themselves. We're getting some questions from the audience around the world. And um, does De DevNet Express happen around the world? Yes, it does, as, as you heard um, Matt talking about all the different countries. Uh, we've been talking about the DevNet Zone. And we have the DevNet Zone at the four Cisco Lives and at our, at our um, sales conference. but. DevNet Express is where the community comes together when we're not at Cisco Live. So I'd love to give a shout out to the people behind DevNet Express. You know, I'm sure I'm going to leave names out, but I definitely want to mention Ruth and Chris, Ruth Cattell and Chris Lunsford, who are, you know, have been behind. And Iftat Sokar, see, I'm already leaving names out. Um, <laughs> you know, the, you know uh, 
um, Jenna, uh, who came up with the hashtag DevNet Express so that we could share all of these stories. So Matt and Eric, if you uh, want to give some shout outs to people around the world who have uh, you know, done a lot of DevNet Express, I'd love for you to chime in on that. Um, we have a couple of uh, systems engineers that uh, take part in a lot of our events. So Patrick Rockles and uh, uh, Francois Can um, attend a lot of those events and are super helpful and actually will be helping out with this uh, particular DevNet Express. Um, so those are the two that, that come to top of mind for me. Yeah, honestly, the list is probably too long to uh, to go through, but uh, I, I've worked with hundreds of different SEs and, and TSAs on them, and uh, we put on some pretty awesome events uh, historically. I think that uh, there's a lot already in the schedule coming up, and like I said, I would definitely watch that events page for ones that are coming close to you, uh, because I haven't been to one yet where there haven't been rock stars. All of the presenters haven't been rock stars. There is a lot of interest, and thank you for taking the time to, rec to recognize people. Um, I know that we can't possibly uh, mention everybody. We are getting some questions. You know, we're mentioning all this technical training, and uh, a question that came in from Ravi on YouTube, and I'll ask Denise this first. Did you start your career in DevNet, and what process did you take to get where you are now? I did not start my career in DevNet. I started in Cisco, so I came out of college and started working at Cisco, but I was just a pure software developer. Um, I actually started in the contact center space and did that for, I think it was nine years. And then I jumped over to DevNet to do, provide developer support. And it really opened my eyes on how everything works because when you're a developer you tend to just take direction of like this is what the customer wants but to go on the other side and talk to the actual customers made it just something different like now I kind of understand where they're coming from when we used to from the developer perspective hear from them saying why did you design it this way and it just things just make a lot more sense um, after coming on this side and it's been a great journey. Um, I've been on the DevNet team, I think it's about three years now. And just being able to interface with everybody and the community and being at, De at Cisco Live has been a great career path so far. And what, how did I get to this point? Pretty much, you know, just follow your passion, follow what you want to do, because if you're really good at what you want to do, then you're going to get to where you want to go. And um, we also want to get people thinking about, you know, always learning. So uh, we are getting a lot of questions about continuing education. And, you know, uh, we definitely want you to follow at Cisco DevNet and always look for updates and content. Um, everyone on the team um, is represented on our, our blogging calendar. So you'll get to hear from our developer advocates, you'll get to hear from our the people who are working with partners. And I also want to take this conversation now from um, the technical training aspect to the business aspect, because, you know, we DevNet is the home for everything that has to do with programmability at Cisco. And if you're an entrepreneur, if you are thinking of um, an idea of a startup and how Cisco can help you build that business, you know, we want to make sure that we answer your questions too. So I'm going to take it back to Eric and ask, is DevNet for business people? And if you've never been to, you know, developer.cisco.com, if you've never been to the DevNet zone, how do you get started? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll actually take those in reverse order if that's okay. Um, so if you've never been to developer or to the DevNet zone, if you haven't been to our site, even if you haven't been to a Cisco Live, uh, first and foremost, I would say uh, with a slight bias, come to the DevNet zone. Uh, we, You already heard uh, about some of the cool things that we do. We have a start now zone. And what's awesome about that is you can come and talk to the folks at the desk, figure out, you know, get the lay of the land, figure out where everything is. There's classroom sessions running nonstop on introductory topics. So if you haven't had any exposure to this, it's a great place for you to start your learning. If you can make it out the Saturday and Sunday before the DevNet Express will actually give you a huge leg up. So you'll actually know a lot of that introductory content coming into it. 
Uh, but even if you can't, you can go to the classroom sessions. Uh, you can go to meet the developer that you already heard about as well. That's a great opportunity where if you think you want to do some programmability or automation tasks, but you're really not quite sure how to get started or what what are the right resources, you can come and sit down and talk with one of us. we got a ton of advocates that are available to help just talk through your challenges, talk through uh, ways to solve it, maybe just point you at the right direction of demos or workshops that'll that'll kind of cover some of what you're struggling with. So I think there's some great content there for you. Um, again, slightly biased, but I'm running a, a classroom session called There and Back, a network automation journey, where I'm actually addressing uh, a lot of those questions of, if you're just getting started, how do you choose the right projects to start on? And it comes down to finding ways that you can do things that you're not risking the network, you're not gonna blow anything up, and then kind of progressing through once you get comfortable, once you get the hang of things, how do you start progressing into doing even more and more transformational things with, uh, with automation? So uh, I think that's a great session. You can also come hear from the experts on a DevNet panel that Mandy Whaley is leading uh, called Network Automation from Concept to Reality, which will also take you through and talk to a number of people from both inside and outside Cisco, people that are practitioners, people that are advocates, talking about, uh, uh, you know, answering your questions about uh, how do you accomplish this? How do you approach things like versioning control or, or risk mitigation? Uh, talking about a lot of interesting topics on that front. So I think those are all great resources that you can use if you haven't ever had any exposure to this. Um, to that point, though, as you said, yes, this is more than just for engineers. So Cisco Live actually has a whole track for IT management. So those leaders, those uh, people at the forefront of technology, uh, whether they're leading a startup or whether they're just managing a large team of IT practitioners, uh, they can come to the IT management uh, program inside of Cisco Live. And it's a whole separate set of tracks, but there's going to be some great content this year. Susie's going to be doing a keynote uh, talking about the industry direction around automation programmability, talking about how to upskill your teams and what resources are available to help build out the right teams to address modern challenges inside of infrastructure. And then uh, Mandy and myself will actually be doing a workshop where we'll take that a, a couple of clicks deeper and we'll we'll talk about uh, what the common challenges we've seen in specific customers are uh, and across our customer bases. We'll talk about um, lessons learned, We'll do some brainstorming activities with everyone that's in attendance around what are the common business challenges you're encountering, and we'll talk through how you could solve those, how you could leave Cisco Live and on Monday have a meaningful conversation with your team around here's the direction and here's some tasks we can start doing this week that'll actually start us down that path. We don't want it to be a three years from now you'll start realizing benefits. We're going to talk about ways you can actually get your teams ramped up and started today uh, to start accomplishing some of these more uh, complex and transformational changes. Wow, you are so organized, Eric. I'm I, I'm not even going to update my calendar. I'm just going to be like, Eric, where do I need to be right now? What's going on? What's the panel? What's the presentation? So, um, you know, I'm, if, if you see me following him around, I'm not stalking him. I'm just trying to figure out where I need to be. Um, but for people who won't be able to join us in person in the DevNet Zone, I'm actually going to bring it to Matt now um, to let us know uh, what are the resources that you recommend uh, for people who want to, um, to to use this technology but but are not there in person. So uh, do you have a favorite sandbox? Do you have a favorite lab? Um, so you mentioned sandboxes and labs, and those are the two places that uh, I push everyone. That's where our main learning content is. So. Uh, the first one is the learning labs, developer.cisco.com slash learning. Um, that is where all of our, our learning labs are. They're step-by-step -step tutorials that walk you through uh, specific technologies. I obviously am biased to the Meraki content. Um, so uh, any of the Meraki labs are uh, absolutely excellent. And um, the sandboxes that are tied to that um, are very useful as well. Actually allow you to kick the tires on some production equipment. Um, in a live environment. So um, some of it's virtualized, some of it's live, just depends on what you're working on. Um, but that is the way to get your hands on these things. Wow, there, it sounds like um, there's a lot of work that can be done and to be done if you want to grow your career uh, using all of these great free resources that everyone uh, on the DevNet team makes available and works so hard to make available to people worldwide. I wanna share, a story about 
my first DevNet Zone encounter in uh, at Cisco Live US because um, I, I, there was something going on. There was a guest keynote or something happening. And um, I'd been invited to um, a woman in tech event in the DevNet Zone. Um, but it was, you know, it was kind of by invitation only. It was very quiet and um, the DevNet Zone wasn't very busy because a lot of people had gone to see this guest keynote. Um, so who comes by the DevNet Zone as, you know, things are quiet? Chuck Robbins. So um, my first selfie with Chuck was in the DevNet Zone and, uh, you know, it was great. I, I wasn't even part of the, the DevNet team yet, but you know, I, I figured if you want to see Chuck, maybe you should hang out in the DevNet zone. What I wish um, I, I could have, you know, said to Chuck at the time was, yes, look what I'm doing with DevNet. Obviously, I was just like, hey, can I get a selfie? But now we have made it possible for you to show Chuck everything you've done with DevNet. You know, you just pull up your profile on your phone and you can you can show all your work. And to tell us about that, we're going to go to Jerry and Thomas. I'm not going to say Thomas and Jerry. This isn't a cat and mouse game. Uh, and they're going to tell us how you can put all the work that you do um, in, in a display that you can, you can show your boss, you can show your teacher, you can show your professor, or you can just keep track of yourself, or you can show it to Chuck next time you see him. So. Thomas and Jerry, how's it going? What do you have for us today? Awesome. Thank you very much, Sylvia, for that wonderful intro. Like you said, it isn't really a cat and mouse game. But again, for everyone, I'm actually Tom. I'm Jerry. And we're Tom, Tom and Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. Um, I just completed the learning lab on DevNet uh, and also earned a cool new badge. Check it out. All right, let's check it out. Wow, you've earned a lot of things on DevNet. Yeah, now. I only spend very little bit of time and uh, it's super easy. And free. Yeah. Hey, how, how about yours? I don't know if we should show everyone in the audience. It's, uh, it's not as great and as and impressive as yours. Mm -hmm. Can I take a look? Let's look. Um, um, it's kind of sad, but we can fix it. But how? Oh, let's go to developer.cisco.com. Awesome. So once we're at developer.cisco.com, like everyone mentioned, like Eric, and, and Matt mentioned, you know, developer.cisco.com is a place where you can find all of these resources online, whether it be, you can see right, right ahead, the DevNet Express, Meraki DevNet Express event. You can also see the learning labs. You have quick links to Code Exchange and also Ecosystem Exchange to see everything that's going on. But for this one, let's sign in. It's free for everyone. So once I've actually signed in, I can use multiple different logins, um, whether I'm more into Git or I'm using Cisco SSO. Um, once I go in up in the top right corner, you'll see me. And then you'll see Dashboard. So in Dashboard, it's just like a central hub for developer to explore different different offers. And then you have a code exchange, you have a learning lab, everything. That's right. And it's also a place when you're first getting started you can see popular learning labs, popular tracks, popular modulars, and even events upcoming, and also some featured code exchange projects. And it's also a great place when you've actually started in progress in learning labs, or you've submitted things in code exchange to be able to keep track of it in one central place. So once I've actually went here and I've taken a learning lab, let's actually go to my actual profile. I can go up to either the top right me or click on my, my nice little cat icon up at the top, which is the profile picture I've chose. Mm -hmm. And I can actually go into my profile, just like what Jerry was showing. So now you can see a lot of badges you just learned. Right, you can see badges you've earned, shields you've acquired, which essentially are, once you've actually acquired badges in let's say IoT, you'll actually get a shield. Um, and these shields progress. Um, of course, this is kind of the first iteration of the profile. Um, we just actually launched it in Cisco Live Barcelona, um, and it's getting it's going to be improved throughout the year. Um, so let's say I want to add a bio to myself. I can either hit the add a bio or hit profile settings. Once I'm in profile settings, I can easily update things like my name, um, even the display name that I want, my photo. Um, definitely put in your title, your company, your location. Um, also, a little brief description about yourself, so you can, when you share this profile out, people can get a sense of who you are. Right. Um, it's really, really key to kind of fill this information out for us, not only to help other DevNet members in the community, but also help DevNet itself 
figure out, okay, if we know people are in specific areas, how can we better serve them with events or, or things targeted? Or if we need to actually localize pages on DevNet for certain content, we can do so as well. Mm -hmm. um, cool. And at the end, right, now oh. I have a profile just as great as Jerry's. Look at that. You've got a perfect profile now. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Wow. And we didn't have to chase anyone around <laughs> to get that profile uh, to look pretty. Nope. I guess everyone can be friends, right? Okay. Yeah, just a little yeah. bit of cheese, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who moved my cheese? <laughs> so you mentioned a couple of things that I want to make sure we, we emphasize. Um, if you let us know what country you're in, we can <laughs> figure out where to bring events and maybe where to localize content. So, um, you know, anything else that you really want to make sure people pay attention to when they're updating their profile? Yeah, I think that's one of the first great ways to start. Really, just giving us that you that basic, giving us that basic information. Um, a lot of people, when they've actually filled out their profile, surprising or not, don't give us that. And it's very hard for us when we're looking back at things to really put together in a, a structured way to figure these things out. So definitely filling out your your location is great. Also filling out what what your actual role, title, and even relationship to Cisco, whether you're a partner um, or a Cisco employee. Mm -hmm or um, a reseller. It's always, this information really helps DevNet um, figure out where we can go in the future. Yeah, tell us your interests of areas. And then that can also help us to uh, give you recommendation. Um, tell you what kind of learning lab ca uh, courses you can take that will benefit for your future. I, I know that you said you launched this at Cisco Live Barcelona and there's going to be updates to it throughout the year and I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm exactly. going to make sure that I always keep an eye on what's available in my profile, which last time I checked was 95% complete. Yes. <laughs> so um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep checking on it. Um, and we, we are getting a lot of continuing education questions. Uh, Eric. Just a heads up, um, I'm going to have one for you. Denise told me I should give this question to you. Why do I need to learn programming if we have a GUI now? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so I would say one of the top reasons that I see people looking at automation in general is being able to integrate into other systems. So uh, first off, I'll say that the GUI a lot of times is an automation system in and of itself. So if you're talking something like an ACI or DNA center, you are actually doing network automation. But there's value in taking all of the things that they bundle together. So if you look at ACI and its ability to manage uh, policy across your entire data center, for instance, that's great. But then you might also want to be able to make that part of a broader workflow where you can set if you want to install a new application or deploy a new application that's only one of 20 steps you need to spin up some virtual machines you need to go and create the right constructs inside the network you need to connect them all together so that's where automation really comes in for me is being able to actually take uh what you could do in a gui and actually make it part of an automated workflow where no one needs to be involved and you can customize it to your exact business needs so i've had customers that build a portal where a developer can just fill in two or three fields and they can have an entire environment sp spun up for them now when you go back to support that environment yes you're probably going to use the gui to go in and browse and see what's been set up and maybe do some troubleshooting but the power to actually integrate the creation of things into that workflow it avoids things like typos or misclicks or just it speeds up the your uh, time to deployment and and thus the actual agility of your business if you can actually build it into some sort of automated flow and then on the back end you can do things like log everything that's been done into your accounting system or into your ticketing system so that you have accountability going forward so if instead of someone click 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 the automation itself can log exactly what's been done when it's been done who approved it so it gives you a lot of measures of accountability as well um, that you can build into your overall orchestration. Thank you for answering that so well. And yes, we want everyone to to think of how they can invest in their learning. Uh, you know, just because something looks easy and you know there's a user experience that's friendly enough, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't always be learning. And boy, this team gave you so much information. So go back, listen to the recording, and make sure you update your profile. But before we say goodbye, we are getting, um, you know, if we had to sum up the questions that we've received today, uh, one of them is really about 
how to get started in your career. We, we have a lot of university students out there who want to be like Denise. So Denise, how do you become a Cisco engineer? You know, I think that's a, that's a good question. Um, Cisco is very wide. There's a lot of different technologies that we cover. So I think the first thing is to understand what you enjoy doing because a network engineer might not have the same interests as somebody who's on the collab side. And so I think that knowing the focus of what you want to do is probably one of your first steps because if you want to get into collab, you got to understand what types of products that Cisco has for collab. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, you know, for me, I just, I just wanted to be a software developer and I just worked hard to be that. And if you work really hard to be that engineer or the um, programmer that you want to be, then you will find a spot for yourself at Cisco. Um, but definitely, if you start ramping yourself up on Cisco products, that's, of course, a plus. So at DevNet, at developer.cisco.com, you can see a lot of the different technologies that we have and start understanding the things that Cisco does. And if you can ramp yourself up using our sandboxes or learning labs, then you kind of gave yourself a one up against people who haven't done this research. That's fantastic advice. You, you don't just want to go to a company and say, oh, I, I want to be a software engineer, right? You, mm -hmm. you want to go to a company and say, I want to work for you. Yeah. And if you show them that you've done your research, you know exactly what they're working on and you can put yourself out there to how you fit in with that group. So if you're really passionate and you want to be a Cisco engineer, um, definitely do your research and DevNet provides you a lot of those resources. You can, as we said in the past, um, you know, sandboxes are completely free. You can start playing around with the different systems without costing anything to you. There's so much to do and, you know, so much homework you can do and we're here to help. Let's uh, make sure I didn't forget anything. So for those of you who have been um, Cisco networking, mobility experts, you know, all along, uh, we do have a wireless dev center that was launched recently, developer.cisco.com slash wireless. Um, for those of you who are going to be at Cisco Live, we want you to go to developer.cisco.com slash Cisco Live and sign up to meet the developer. You can have one-on-one -on -one time with you know our amazing team of developer advocates so meet the developer if you don't already have plans for the weekend before cisco live and you're going to be near san diego um why pass up two days of free training with the meraki team you know you get to hang out with matt i mean i, I know people that that you know are, are going to go out of their way to be able to hang out with matt um, so anything else, you know, uh, Eric, Matt, you're twitching in your chairs, like you want to add something. What else do people need to not forget? Well, I'd go one step further and say I'd pay money to spend time with Matt. So uh, <laughs> I, I would definitely encourage people to take advantage of the free, uh, the free DevNet Express that he's, he's put so much time into. Um, no, I would just reiterate everything that you've said. If, if you can't make it, check out resources like the Sandbox, huge resource. Go pound on it, try stuff out, learn the technology, learn how to interact with it programmatically. Uh, if you can make it, we're going to have over 100 workshops, 100 classroom sessions, 120 speakers. It's a huge open, airy space. So San Diego, you can't go wrong there. Um, but where we're set up this year is just a gorgeous space. So I encourage you to all come check it out and see all the awesome resources. And the sessions you can't make, check them out after the fact on Cisco Live 365. And as you can see, I like it so much, I'm already here. I've got here a month early and I'm just waiting for you all to arrive. <laughs> and Matt, we'll let you have the last word because you're gonna be the first one getting, getting to work with that uh, Meraki DevNet Express. So um, I'm gonna close with a story then, um, if, if, since I've, you've given me this opportunity. So this is my um, sixth uh, U.S. Cisco Live. Actually, that's not true. It's my eighth. Um, but as part of the DevNet team, and I was fortunate enough to be part of the original team that put on the original um, DevNet Zone in San Francisco in May of 2014. Um, 
And we really did not know how this was all going to go. And we had been given the maximum about a month and a half to two months previous that we had to put on the DevNet zone. And that included our first iteration of learning labs, our first group of sessions. We didn't even have a concept of workshops. Um, and we actually held a hackathon the weekend before um, where we stayed up all night long and built out a bunch of cool uh, solutions. And um, so I worked at that uh, hackathon for 29 hours or however long we had it in a row and um, and unfortunately uh, the day that J uh, John Chambers came to the DevNet zone I had taken a, a, an hour break to go take a nap <laughs> and he actually ended up meeting with my team um, that I had helped in the hackathon and I actually have a picture of it and I wish I would have brought it up but uh, he, he's meeting with my team seeing the solution that we had worked on all night and I missed my opportunity um, to to meet John at the time, um, and actually not until Cisco Live uh, last year, Cisco Live US last year, was I able to meet either John or Chuck um, as they came by the DevNet zone. So I had a rash of uh, missing the the CEO uh, meetings just based on happenstance. But uh, fortunately, even though I've I've been in almost every Cisco Live for the last uh, five years, um, so f five year anniversary. Um, I, w I was finally able to meet Chuck last year, so that was great. Um, so, uh, again, you know, come to the come to the the DevNet Express event the week before. Come to the DevNet Zone if you can't check out all of our content materials. Um, we really take special pride in putting this out there. We really love what we do, and um, I think you'll find everything that we do very helpful, informative, not just to the career that you have now, but the career that you're building. Um, and uh, you know. Good luck and Godspeed. Wow, wow, Matt, that is just really a testament to all the hard work that you and everyone in Team DevNet puts into making this an awesome experience, an awesome learning experience for everyone who takes the time to hang out and learn something. I, I know that you know in the marketing team we're always changing taglines, but I'm going to say you know come to the DevNet Zone. We help you learn, code, inspire, and connect. And follow us on Twitter at Cisco DevNet. We're going to get that picture of of uh, John Chambers at the first ever DevNet Zone out there. And I would like to see pictures from all of you. Thanks for joining us, and see you in the DevNet Zone. Bye. Bye.